Are you an emotional coward? Not trying to call anybody names, but most of us have been trained into emotional cowardice our whole lives. We've been trained that that's normal, and we have certainly not been trained to label this thing cowardice. We've been taught that this is a, a very natural way to be, and kind of strange not to be. So, excuse the kitty running around um, in circles around me. Um, but, uh, you know, he is not an emotional coward. He's just doing it to the max. But anyway, so to be an emotional coward means kind of like to be a coward, right? What is a coward? It's the opposite of somebody that's brave. So brave is feel the fear and do it anyway. So what would an emotional coward be? It'd be somebody who can't just feel the feeling, right? It's like, if, if you're brave, you do not shy away from having the feeling. <clears throat> Whether it's a traditional idea of a coward versus a brave person, somebody who's willing to feel the fear and do it anyway, an emotionally brave person would be somebody who is willing to feel whatever and live their truth, express their truth, whatever that may be. It might be that you do art and to be an emotional coward would be, well, what if they don't like it? I'm going to hold back showing other people my art because they might not like it. They might reject me. They might punish me. They might ridicule me. And in order to not feel those emotions, you don't show anybody your art. And so that would be a form of emotional cowardice. Um... I don't want to show somebody that I like them because they might not like me back. Emotional cowardice. I want to apply for that job, but I might not get it. Oh no, what if I go in for the interview and they just laugh right in my face? Like, how the hell did you think you were going to ever get this job? So I don't even apply. I don't even take a, a chance. We have built our lives around our emotional cowardice. I can't go in the elevator because I'm a little bit claustrophobic. Well, you can go in the elevator and be claustrophobic. And I'm not talking about somebody who has an advanced condition where it would really not be good to go in an elevator and they need to do some other work before they start going in elevators. I'm not talking about go out and subject yourself to an emotional breakdown because you want to prove how emotionally brave you are. I'm talking about the little things. The little decisions in life where we betray our authenticity in favor of our emotional avoidance. So, are you an emotional coward? Think about it. Think about the, the, the multiple choices you make each day that might just come down to emotional cowardice. And what emotional cowardice really comes down to in the end is the rejection of the inner child who has those emotions. That's what it's all about. Be a champion of your inner, inner child, of your authenticity and your creativity. Be a champion of your uniqueness. Flaunt it for all to see. Don't do anything that's going to get you in jail or, you know, highly punished. I'm not saying that. Don't challenge psychological patterns that, to an extent where you're putting yourself in danger, of course don't do that. 
But the little decisions that we make all day long, every day, when we start looking at them in terms of, is this me being an emotional coward or emotionally brave? It's a useful thing to look at. It's a useful tool. I recommend it highly. Check it out. Let me know in the comments how it all works out for you. Thanks so much for watching.